But I do know, you know, as, as a man thinks, and this is what, what is so much, so important, as a man thinks, in, 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 you know, it, it, so is he. And so we're, we're constantly being renewed. Somebody said, oh, you're, you know, I remember a few years back when I was in Branson, I, this lady said, oh, you're like brainwashed. You're full of it, you know. And I thought, yeah. Yeah. My brain is washed by the, by the right. word of God. Yeah. Right. You know, I want my brain yeah. washed yeah, out exactly. by the word yes. of God. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, am I a brainwash? I mean, yeah, you know, good. so yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and 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 I, and there's, there's just there's a, stuff. a lot more cleaning to do. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm, not, yeah. I'm not totally cleansed out yet. I'm not, <clears> yeah. Yeah. I think I'm doing good until you know it says whoever can control their tongue. Oh, yeah. you, know, you go along for a week, two weeks, and all of a sudden something it just makes you mad and just like a, yeah. a nanosecond, mm -hmm. and you go, wow, where'd that come from? Yeah. I know it's in there, unfortunately. Yeah, you know, it's, 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 when you're, you're, you're judging yourself, you're working on yourself, you're working on you, because we really do, all of us, you know, we have a full-time job just keeping up. this stuff. You've got to control. Like, God, yeah. Oh jeez, it's just. Yeah. Then, I'm, I'm getting better. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. During worship, Tim, when did you create? What What was it that you you, you spoke out again? Work. Work is the most honorable thing uh, that we do in our lives, mm -hmm. and it says He never stops working. Mm -hmm. I and mean, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. that's Think about work. How that's under attack nowadays. Oh yeah. You know, just kind of quietly quit. Ooh. Just go to work, punch the clock, and just you know, and then, you know all these things. And I, I always tell people, you know, I was I was raised not by an alcoholic. I was raised by a workaholic. Yeah. <laughs> My dad was a workaholic. <laughs> he could not stop working. That man worked all the time. You know. It was amazing. Uh, even to this day, my mom, you know, I, I don't work as much as my dad. My dad, up until when he was in his eighties, he could still pretty much physically at work. <laughs> he, yeah. to. Uh, he was sick with pancreatic cancer and he'd get up on the roof and he's trying to fix stuff and it's like dad you know and he, a few weeks later he died and it was like he was still trying to put a fence up and, wow. you know I mean he just wouldn't just from that age you know the great depression uh -huh. but there's something honorable about work my dad used to yeah. say you know make sure you do a good job make sure you do it under the Lord man I mean yeah. you know, don't just do sloppy work you know yeah that's good. Just, dad always said you do a good job or don't do it at all you know he said yeah, do it right or don't do it at all yeah. I said, okay, you do it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He didn't like that. I didn't like that. <laughs> no. My dad was like, get out there and do it. If you didn't do it right, you're going to do it again until you get it right. Yeah. And I'm going to come and check it again. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. And you're going to stay on it until you get it at least halfway deep. Sometimes I say, okay, we, we've got a little time restraint. Get it halfway decent. Let's get over here and get this yeah. done. Mm -hmm. Earl, when we were getting ready to worship or during the first song, you were talking about how you could, the Lord was showing you something. Was there kind of like a... What was the overall message you were kind of sensing when, when you were seeing the Lord? Oh, just that, you know, the trees, you know, mm -hmm. I could see his face and his hand point to those other trees and just saying that this tree's dying over here. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, go there, mm -hmm. talk to them, go there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think we get stalemate. Yeah. We're kind of afraid to step out even when the Lord points people out to us. Uh -huh. Say, why don't you go to that? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It's just the end. Yeah, it does it, but Fear, yeah. Uh, we found that if you just start walking towards them, even if you don't know what you're going to say, uh -huh. it's out of faith that you're going to it's going to give it to you sometime before you get there, sometime when you're standing there. You go, yeah. Hey, Lord, what do you want me to say? And you say, I don't have something for you. <laughs> yeah. And then he gives it yeah. to you. Sometimes it's when you're sitting down. That's better from something, mm -hmm. but when you're facing somebody and you know you're supposed to say something, he wants to come in out of our mouth first, then we'll go for this. You know, I have a Bible verse I want to share on that that I have never quite seen before, but when I saw it, it really helped me grow in my confidence that I can speak words to people from the Lord, mm -hmm. prophetic words, because you know me, Earl, like remember back when I first started taking your class, you are like, you're like, Nate, I sense about you you really want to make sure you get it right. You don't want to hurt someone by accidentally. And I was like, yeah, it is kind of true. I don't want to be responsible for giving maybe a false word. Maybe that's just me. And so it's been kind of hard for me to uh, <clears throat> to risk, you know, 
it's like, well, but I want to really know that I have the word first before I even step out. Because, like, the Lord didn't give me a dream about this. The way God, for some reason, is in the prophetic, He wants us to be, like, right there with maybe just the smallest little sliver of something and just start speaking. And once you start speaking, you just start giving it to you. You know? But anyways, um, <clears throat> this verse in 1 Peter chapter 4, uh, verse 11, I'll, I'll probably just read verse 10. So 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. And then the King James says, speak as if you are an oracle. You know, speak as you're an oracle of God. And um, and that's kind of powerful. Uh, what verse is that? Uh, 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 10 and 11 and so like if you're going to speak it's basically telling you to, to just you know how like in the beginning part of the prophetic movement a lot of times they would just say thus saith the Lord and then they'll say the prophecy now a lot of times we kind of frown on that these days but in a sense I'm starting to realize that what, you can say it in, in the wrong in the wrong kind of like, oh, I'm a prophet, thus right. saith the Lord, and I'm never wrong. Right. That's the wrong way of saying that. But at the same time, you should be able to have that confidence that, like, I hear the Lord, I have a relationship with the Lord, I have a good heart, I'm trying to help help you. And as long as you have the right heart, you should, you may not have to say it to him, but in your own thinking, you should be like, yeah, thus saith the Lord. He, you know, mm-hmm. here's what he says about you. And just have that, just be resting in the fact that, you believe God will speak through you as an oracle of God, you know? And, um, Kelly, you shared that podcast with me about how uh, Dan McCollum was kind of saying how we... Can you share a little bit about what he shared in that? Yeah, I should have watched it again, or listened to it again. So, I mean, it so shifted the way I think about it because um, he was saying that we really are more spiritual than physical. I mean, than... Here, so we're really more there than we are here kind of yeah. idea. Yeah, it kind of says that thing about how really we're spirit <laughs> beings kind of having yes. a physical uh, bodies. Well, we're, we're like having like a physical like temporary, like we're more yeah. spiritual having a physical experience. Experience, yeah, there that's the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so he said so, because I used, he said I used to have those issues, same thing of like is this really from God or did I just think it or what is that? And I mean, we all have that, right? So he said once he heard the Lord tell him that, then he trusts that whatever comes in his head is from the Lord. And so it just totally shifts your thinking versus always thinking, oh, that's me. Mm-hmm. Well, no, it's not. It's mm-hmm. actually the Lord. Just go there. Go with it. Follow yeah. it. And then, you know, I'll show you if it's not. <laughs> so yeah. uh, I'm trying really hard to do that. Yeah. So. Yeah. I took a risk the other day when we had that little pizza at night. Um, and I just sort of took a risk of just like this small little sense of what I, I had for um, Thomas. And I just kind of shared what I felt like I had. And then, and then you guys kind of chimed in. And every, it seemed like everybody had a unity of, of the, of, we were confirming each other. And then at the end of it, Thomas was like, that is amazing. Yeah. He's like, because I this, 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 this. And it's right. like, I'm taking that as a word of the Lord. And, um, and I was just like, man, that was so easy. That was so easy to do that, you know? And we did it, because we, we hung out for like a couple hours, kind of just fellowshipping, and then we finally spent the last like 10 minutes to do that little exercise. And, and it like, it was actually life-changing for him, because he was wow. like waiting on a word that was like really gonna direct his ministry, and just his life and everything. And I was like, wow. And I, and I started thinking of that passage after that. Everyone use your gift to serve others, and the one who speaks, speak as an oracle of God. And how many people, like, I hear it in sometimes the prophetic movement, almost like a frowning of, oh, you think you're some oracle. But God actually tells us to, yeah, be an oracle. It's not that big of a deal. Just, just do it. <laughs> and it's okay to use three, what we talked about in our mm-hmm. class, about using three steps. Mm-hmm. And just ask them, is this from you, Lord? Yeah. Is this what you want me to say? Mm-hmm. Is this how you want me to say it? And then we add it. Is this <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. well, sometimes they'll say no. And you have to wait, and I've waited a month or more. Yeah. Forgot all about it until Lord said, "Now I want you to say it." 
stay away. <laughs> <laughs> and she also he wants us to do that because sometimes we know something's going to happen in the new future. He'll give us that, but it's not the time to give it yet. Yeah. yeah. That's very good. That's very true. That's good. That's good. Very true. During worship, anybody have some kind of come to them during the worship time that you'd like to share? I just saw, every time I closed my eyes, I could see fire. Oh, wow. And it was like two, two colors of fire. You know, there was the, the yellow and then the red. But I didn't quite see, I think the hottest one is the blue. Oh, wow. But then I didn't know if that was mean that we're, we're seeing the yellow and we're in the red, but we're not quite in that. Wow. I mean, well, I, I received that. Really. I received that because uh, the Lord, like when we were meeting at the Grecians, like when we just started meeting there, the Lord gave me this whole dream that I shared you guys about how we need to just keep digging, keep digging, keep digging, because eventually we're going to get down to the tenth layer down where the gold was. Mm. And so the gold is like the most purest form of the metal, whereas the blue is the most purest, highest heat. So it kind of is like a, another way of showing how we're pressing in. And we're not there yet, but we'll just keep pressing together, and God will give us more and more as we keep doing it. Yeah, that's good. Well, well, last um, Wednesday, I was worshiping, le leading worship at Harvest Church, and I'm, I'm <coughs> doing, I'll do some tomorrow too. And then, uh, and then Friday was at Hosanna Church. We did that whole service there, and then uh, Sunday was at Marcola Community. No, Marcola Valley Assembly of God. There's, there's three different places in it tonight. And what I, it's kind of like what I'm seeing is God is like, He's preparing, He's nourishing, and He's lining up His, um, his you know, the body. In, in all of these different aspects, I mean, there's, 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 um, there's something stirring. You know, in these different places, and it's not. I mean, it's not only. It's like even when I, you know, when I when I go, to, like, for 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 instance, at at Marcola uh, Assembly of God, Valley Assembly of God, you know, pastor is like 82 years old, and he's you know he was kind of um, kind of a uh, a lot of times he would have a lot of scripture, you know, and a lot of things, and I kind of get done with the service, and I'm kind of thinking, hey, you know, I don't. It was really good, but I don't really know what exactly the main, you know, the main thing was. He had kind of a topic, but it was kind of, you know, a lot. And, and I'm used to a little bit different with, with like Pastor Brian, where they kind of have a topic and they kind of stay on track. And when you leave, go, oh yeah, we talked about this or we talked about that at church. You know, you're kind of a little bit different. But this Sunday, I mean, I've never heard him preach like this before. I mean, there, there was something that happened and he was just all about being uh, like Christ-like and being imitators of Christ. And he just nailed it, every single scripture. And just like, I was like, whoa, this is like a whole new thing. I mean, it's, it's just another level, boom. <clears throat> and the same thing happened at, at, uh, at Hosanna. I mean, it was like another level on Friday. I mean, so what I'm seeing is God is raising up his, you know, his, um, and he's raising up his preacher, he, the old preachers, and, and all of these different parts of the Bible. It's like getting us prepared because there's something big ready to happen. Yeah. Um, and it's not just the coming back of, 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 of the Lord. I think there's something that the body of Christ is going to stand up here pretty soon and be be known, and they're going to know it's God. There's a, no matter what these people want to do, government or whatever, or all the media or whatever, they're going to say it's undeniable. And, and I think we need to... Uh, um, uh, reverence and respect that yeah. because it's happening all over all these different little places that's just yeah. in this county yeah. and this is supposed to be an unchurched county mm. I don't know mm. the church is rising up around yeah. <laughs> yeah. All these I'm in the west part of Eugene I'm in Mohawk Valley and I'm in the south part of Eugene and we're over here in Springfield wow it's, it's something's happening guys Dan I want you to actually share your dream because I think I know the interpretation to it and I think about the little pool? Yeah, I, I, I kind of want you to share it to the group because uh, I would just want to see if anybody else picks up on this. Can I say something to yeah. tag on to his? Yeah. We were watching Flashpoint before we came over, and uh, Mario Murillo is oh. live on there, and uh, mm -hmm. he's putting together a big, giant outreach crusade in Sacramento. 
and he has like 1,500 or so people just go out knock door to door, knock on door, and he said everybody, literally everybody they talk to, front door, wanted Christ. Wow. They're just fed up with the economy of the world. They want to do, they want something new in their life. So he says he's never seen it like this. Mm -hmm. He's been doing this his whole life, and he says every place he goes, it's, people are more and more willing to take Christ in and say, "Hey, this is the only thing I see that's going to work." And, mm -hmm. and, it, and it tend to be younger people coming. The younger generation are just, just out there, you know, not doing very good, and they're really coming to his crusade. So he's really excited, but he sees a real shift that. Now everybody wants it because God's bringing something to his head with the politics that's going on. And yeah, it's almost a, like he's used politics and everything. You know, Trump being out and fight in the world economics and people are seeing his stuff and everything. Yeah, it's almost like God's using all that. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. People are saying, "Hey, I need something." It's yeah. God, you know, realizes it. It's almost like God's work. It's like a last resort. Yeah, the foxhole, you know. You know? I got a report from from Harvest Church. Um, Julia was a nurse at the youth camp, and they were teenagers, and they had like 65 teenagers, and a lot of them invited their unsafe friends. And by the time I, Julia told me this today, she said, Pastor Brian just found out by the time that that was over with, all of the kids that came that were unsaved got saved. Wow. All of them. Wow. The first night was five, and, and after that, by the end of the camp, all of them got saved. And there were 40 healings. Wow. wow. 40 healings. That's wow. great. <laughs> yeah. A pastor, uh, his name is Jeff Taylor. He's in a world evangelist. He evangelizes thousands of people in Philippines and everything. He came to speak. He's doing his annual blast off meeting at our church, which starts on Sunday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Next Tuesday, I'll be there probably. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with Jeff Taylor blast off meeting. We've We've had people get out of wheelchairs. We've had people wow. heals. Get, he, you know, he does the healing. I mean, he's he's just you know full of the word. Just goes you know. So uh, I don't know if it's at Harvest Church International up on Fox Hollow if you're interested. But uh, I just got that report today. Wow. So you're, that ties along with what you're saying. Like, hey, people, man, yeah. they, they're tired. They, they they don't see it without Jesus. They have no future. You know, I was, in I this country, day, <laughs> I went to the. Uh, it was uh, last Thursday was the day that we meet for the people for Christ for the men. And the guy was up there, and he he read this report of how many uh, pastors are falling away from the Lord, and how many uh, youth are falling away from the Lord, yeah. and it, it, the statistics were staggering. How many uh, Christians are just falling away? How many uh, new age uh, uh, kids, millennials and that, they don't have to do with God, they're in the media. And he just went down the generations of how many each generation was just falling away, all these statistics. And it was a bad, it was, a, it was not good how many statistics show that people are just falling away from the church. How many young people don't even do with God. And I was sitting there and I was getting energized. Yeah. When he got done, I said, praise God. I said, just... That's that energizes me because just think how many people are going to get saved. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I said uh, you can either it's either half full or half empty, and I'm saying it's half it's half full. Yeah. And God is, if it's that bad, God's going to do. Yeah. yeah. And then you're telling me about these people getting saved. Yeah. There's the other side of the coin. That you've got to hear the other, the other side, side of both the sides of this. Yeah. And even in the, even in Iran and all these other places where Christianity is taboo. The underground church is growing mm -hmm. exponentially. I yeah. mean, they are growing and healings and everything. And I heard a guy talk the other day, I think it was Hank Kuhlman, who said that uh, we evangelized the world, the United States. We were the ones that sent mission to that. We were the country that everybody looked at. And he said that he was up in the heavens, I think it was. And all the and all these prayers were coming from the United States. I mean, they were and they were like stars, and they were shooting, mm -hmm. but they fizzled out. Mm -hmm. And he says, and there was there was other prayers coming up, like stars and that shooting by them from other countries, from Iran and China and that, and they were shooting by them, and they were going way past them. 
I mean, they were they were going. Um, but American, <coughs> they would barely hit them and go by them. They fizzled out. They go, what's going on? Lord? He says, people in America, they pray. Uh, they pray from their uh, what is it? They're not their experiences. Oh, they put it this way. Uh, they don't pray from their heart. Yeah. In other countries in persecution, they're praying prayers from their heart mm -hmm. because you know they know the Lord and they they're tied together more. Yeah. And so their prayers have more power. Wow. And we just pray from our emotions and from what we feel and what we know from God. Yeah. We don't pray from experiences because that's the way our church is They've been persecuted. Mm -hmm. They've been you know. Yeah. So they know what it is. They know God. Something to think you, about when you pray. I, I went with, do you know who Pastor uh, Herb Newell is? Or, um, yeah, Herb Newell. He, he took me down because he said there's a place we can, uh, that he's, he wanted me to come and help him. He's going to meet in Cresswell. And it's with uh, um, oh. Campus Life. Yeah. Um, what's his name? Glenn Nelson, I think. Glenn Nielsen. Uh, is that any? Is Glenn. The church. Is the church on a hill? No, no, it's not a church. It's a, it's a storefront right on the main street oh, in Fresno okay. that they I'm just got that they're painting up and everything. We might be able to do meetings there too if you want oh, wow. something interesting yeah. there. Anyway, the reason why I wanted to tell you this because I just met with him last week, and I said, okay, I'm listening to this guy Glenn Pack, and I said, Glenn, you know, how long have you been with Campus Life and and you know, youth youth for Christ? Oh, yeah, I started back in the early 80s. And I said, wow, you're going on like 35, 40 years, over, you know, four decades. I said, well, what is the biggest difference you see with the kids from the 80s to now? He said, oh, no question. I've got third generation removed from the Bible. They, these kids now, their parents didn't, don't know, didn't go to church. Their, their, their grandparents didn't go to church. Their parents didn't go to church. And they didn't go to church. He says, i got kids that come to these meetings. They never even heard of Adam and Eve. Oh wow! Oh, they never, wow. they never even heard of, of David and Goliath. Oh, they, wow. they haven't even heard it. Wow! And he said, and he said, that's the reason why we're bumping this thing up. We're getting this place. We're we're renting this place. We're going after these kids. And I'm thinking, you been doing this from the '80s? This guy is, you know, my age. He's in his '60s or maybe. And he's just like on fire. Like, what? He's, like, he's like, yeah, you know, we got, this is, they're so hungry. And, and they're, you know, it's like yeah. they're ripe for the picking. He's yeah. just like, you know, and he's after it. And I'm, and I'm just meeting all these different people from the body of Christ. And I'm thinking, what, one of the things that we do with this, when we come to different places like this house, and we were in spring, the other place, and up Mark Golden, it's like we're like we're like the guys who started the forest fires. Yeah, know? exactly. The bad guys who started yeah. the forest fires yeah. got everything going. You know, they yeah. so it, I think humans we start little, little. Mm. We're sparking things around this community, guys. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly we, kind of what Jerry exactly. found that vision he had. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah the yeah. fires going all over the community. Exactly. exactly. Yep. Yep. And and so and there's all these opportunities. I mean, with these different and the ones, what it's like you know like Dave Highland, you know, he, he's gone around to all these different churches and then he's going back to the places where the fire is. Because yeah. some of them, he said, they resist. there's resistance yeah. against his bringing the community together and getting 600 yeah. guys together and, and fired up. dealing with the men, trying to get the men fired up for God. And all, yeah. some churches are like, oh, phew, you don't want to even do that. Yeah. You, know, you guys, you know, keep our guys over here. But <laughs> and he was like, I, could, I remember I asked him, I said, what was your biggest, you know, uh, Obstacle, you know, challenges. He said, "The pastors. Yeah. So many of them in, in, in the community were just trying to shut him down." <clears throat> and I said, "Well, it wasn't our pastor. I said, we all we got. We, we don't have that big of a church. We got, you know, maybe a hundred people come every Sunday. But we had, you know, thirty, forty, you know. Well, we had like 20, 25 guys showing up and helping him move tables and doing yeah. everything yeah. because my pastor's all in the community. It's like, yeah. oh, we're doing something. Let's see if we can get." We want to get all of Oregon saved. You know, that's yeah. the right. It's like let's get everybody saved. Yeah. You know? yeah. So that's the thing is that uh, I feel like this thing is starting to kind of get some traction. Yeah. You know, because yeah. people are hungry and stuff. Yeah. And just like what you said with Mario Murillo, he's seeing it. And we can. And this is you know this is a place <coughs> in Eugene and and Oregon in, in in this area where it's been you know kind of hard to get some traction for a while. Yeah. But it's getting there. It's yeah. there's traction here. You know, God had me, God led me to study uh, one of the revivals in the past, and it was uh, the Welsh revival, uh, 
No, no, it it's actually the guy who had one of the biggest revivals ever. Like even like the donkeys. It was from, the Welsh revival. Who yeah. Started that. Yeah. I can't remember. His name. I know who you're talking about. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, he just like he, he had a pretty um, sanctified way of living. He just didn't get into much sin at all. He kind of just preserved himself uh, for God and. And, and then all of a sudden, like, the Lord kind of spoke and was like, he's like, do you believe I can give you the whole country? In a sense, like, I'd revive it for the whole country. And he, like, turns to his buddy when he heard that in prayer. He's like, I just heard the Lord say he wants to give us the whole country. And his buddy's like, well, amen. Mm -hmm. And then, like, and, and so they had an agreement. And it's like, wow. And, like, in his, in his story, he's like, I'm so glad that I had a friend that, that would believe it with me. Mm -hmm. Rather than shooting it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. like there's probably a lot of power right there. Because mm -hmm. they had agreement, wherever two or three agree, yeah. they both agreed together, yeah. and then God just poured it out. And like the coal miners and stuff, they were so used to swearing at each other that the donkeys and stuff that were working with them and, and moving the stuff, like they would they would actually like kind of they knew those curse words. But the revival was so good that all the uh, all the bars closed down, everything, and all the coal miners they they felt convicted, so they stopped swearing. Well, when they stopped swearing, the donkeys would not know how to do their thing anymore. Uh -huh. And so they actually had to get rid of all the donkeys. They had to get new donkeys. Start, start fresh. And start over. Yeah, the donkeys saved. Yeah. The donkeys said the curse words. And so anyways, like, God had me study the principles of this revival. And the, the big thing that I saw that, that was so special about that revival is there was uh, freedom of the spirit and there wasn't any control. There wasn't any like official like pastoral type type control, and so when I saw that, I was like, "The Lord showed me that in Scripture." And so what the Lord showed me is like in the Old Testament, the priests. One thing that would cause a priest to lose his anointing was overstepping, like over grabbing and overstepping, and so control. And like where the where the Spirit is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. And so that that guy, the way he stewarded that way, revival, is he expected at any meeting that the Holy Spirit was going to speak through multiple people. Mm -hmm. So he would get there, he would give a small little message or whatever. And, and it was kind of like Catholic Kuhlman type stuff. It's like, just in the atmosphere, people would be getting healed and, and deliverance without even really having people touch yeah. that stuff. You know? And uh, and uh, but I kind of want to have you, Dan, share your dream, because your dream kind of shows everything that we're talking about right now. It's kind of a con confirmation even to me of what I felt like your dream meant. Really? Like the stuff that they are talking about, how the youth. And okay. so, uh, go ahead and just share your dream real quick, and then we'll just, and then after a little bit of just people kind of pondering what they are getting from the Lord, I might even share kind of my interpretation of it. It's a pretty powerful dream. Can I share one of the little something yeah. else I have? Yeah. Sure. So, one thing I've been learning about the Lord speaking to us, or speaking to me, one way He speaks to me is with pictures. I may talk to somebody, and all of a sudden I see a picture over them. Or yeah. That's just some. This is the way the Lord's been. One way He speaks to me. Anyway, having said that, I saw one over David as he was talking about going from church to church. And he's like, there's a new fire, and but what I saw, the Lord showed me. I saw a picture. I saw an eagle overtake you. You turned into an eagle. But as I looked at the eagle, he was losing his feathers and growing new feathers. Oh, wow. Mm. And all of a sudden, with the new feathers, he went higher and higher and higher wow. and higher. And he never stopped climbing wow. with his new feathers. So I just believe that's something for you, David, that, you know, that uh, the old is being loosed off of you. you know. I'll speak into that, Dave. <clears throat> um, when a storm comes, well, when an eagle, uh, when birds attack an eagle, he just goes higher. Because a lot of birds can't fly as high as an eagle. And they drop off. And also, when there's a storm coming, uh, an eagle, he can fly over the storm where most birds are in the storm. The eagle is the only bird that can fly high and uh, above a storm. Right. Uh, he can stay there for a long time, riding on the current. And then when the storm passes, he comes down. 
So I just say God's going to take you higher above the storm and you're being renewed as an eagle. Explains. Everything in an eagle gets renewed, even the deep pits. Yesterday I did a, a luau. And it wasn't as album, it was just David Wan, do some Hawaiian music and you know, whatever else. And it was at the Staffordshire out there on Highway 58 at the, uh, uh, it's, a, it's like a, mo, uh, a modular home, uh, 655 and, and over community, beautiful on the beach, I mean, on the, on the river and everything, had a nice setting and everything. So I set up my cases when I'm playing music out there. And, uh, you know, well, first of all, we ate and I was sitting down and talk to somebody said, there's a number of retired pastors there. <laughs> They're retired pastors. There was no alcohol or anything. You know, they were all, you know, uh, seniors and stuff. No, I retired. I, I was a pastor for this year. There was about three guys that I talked to that were pastors and other, not, a lot of believers, you know. So I just really intertwined it. And while I was doing it, there was something like that, like what you're saying was happening. It was like the... You know, the standard stuff, you know, the Hawaiian, you know, regular stuff, or the, even the, some of the Elvis music. I did a few songs, you know, secular stuff for that. Not real secular, but, you know. But it just wasn't the same as, like, Friday night. I mean, because that, that Saturday, you no, know, that was that, that was Sunday. Yesterday was Sunday, right? No, it was Sunday, it was Sunday I did that. Yesterday was... No, no, it was yesterday. It was Monday, yeah. It was Monday I did that. Sunday I did the church, and Saturday, Friday I did the... So, so I'm doing two praise and worships, and I'm kind of doing a regular. Thing. And of course, I got paid, you know, good money to go out there and do this, and you know, just pay, pay my bills and all, and you know, make make some money. But yeah, I was, I, you know, and my wife said, "Oh, it was so great," and she said, "Oh, we loved the way that you sang about God and everything else like that." And I, I walked away and I thought, you know, it was really good and everything else, but I kind of just wish it was just all God, you know. And then, you know, some of them wanted, you know, some Hawaiian little grass shack or whatever, you know, just. Standard stuff it wasn't anything perverted or anything, you know, but they just you know don holes and tiny bubbles, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So it was fun and everything like that, but it was definitely God's got so much. I mean, I was like, I'm soaring it like this, and I've got to come down for a little bit of landing. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm up here with you guys again. <laughs> it's like, it's like, what do you want to do? I mean, I, yeah, God, I don't, you know, I know, you know, I know that I I need to work. You know, and, and I know you're. I'm, thank God, this person calls me up and says, "Come and do this. We're going to give you cash." And I'm like, "Whoa, praise the Lord!" You know, <laughs> then, <laughs> you know how those yeah. gigs are, right? <laughs> and then you're thinking, "Okay, wait a minute." Uh, so anyway, I just that it's all it all it all kind of connects. So you're talking. I had uh, I had the word Johnny Appleseed for spreading seed. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I can't eagle too. Like you, uh, what eagles eagles do is you you. Uh, you can see and if you can fly it. Part two, Johnny Appleseed. Oh, yeah. 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 That's when you play better. But you eagles can see into. Yeah, you, you can see in the spirit and you can see into people's lives and call forth their calling, their gifting. Their, and I've watched how you've kind of done that. I've been seeing how you do that. And so I think that's going to keep growing in you. Oh, praise yeah. God. Praise God. Um, the, by the way, the guy I was talking about was Evan Roberts. That oh, guy. Yeah. That revival with Evan Roberts and stuff. And I think the reason, yeah, the reason why the Lord had me study him and his revival is because the, the thing the Lord showed me about our area, the, the Eugene area, there's been a real strong religious spirit that's been stifling the freedom in our area. And so Evan Roberts, in the way God moved in that revival, is kind of like where he wants to take us in this area. That's moving in the opposite spirit. Yes. That's, that, that's moving in the opposite spirit where the spirit of the Lord is there's supposed to be freedom and yeah. not just that heavy-handed control. And so, yeah. wow. Yeah. But so your dream, his dream, I think, points to this too. And so, Dan, yeah, share this dream with okay. you. I had, yeah, I had this dream a few days back. Uh, actually, I wasn't going to share it because I thought it was so weird. I couldn't figure out what it meant. So. Dreams are like that too. <laughs> Dreams are very metaphorical. <laughs> right. And like even the dream with like Gideon in the Old Testament, where Gideon's like afraid, so the Lord has him go to the edge of the army, and he hears the guy talking he's like i had a dream last night and it's like a barley i got something bundle of barley rolled down the hill and crashed <laughs> and it's like well don't you know it's gideon and his army and so it's like dreams can be very metaphorical you know and uh well yeah dan um okay. I'm sure. so i have the dream was this i have a four-year-old niece actually for real 
and uh, I was going to True Value. I wanted to buy this little girl one of those little blow-up swimming pools. You know, they, you blow them up, they're like this tall, and maybe six feet wide. So I went down to True Value and I talked to the man. I said, I, I asked him, I go, hey, I'd like to get one of those swimming pools from you if I could, if I could buy one. And I don't know what happened, but he couldn't find them. They were out or something happened. And uh, so I left. So a few days later, I came back to True Value and I talked to somebody different. And I said, hey, I'd like to buy a little swimming pool for my little niece, one of your blow up swimming pools. He goes, oh yeah, we'll get you one. Well, I'll, I'll get one for you. We've got them, da 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 da. So I'm, I was telling you, I was standing at a, at a counter. There was like a big countertop. And there were, I saw employees around and then there were customers off to my side. But all of a sudden as I'm standing there waiting for my blow up swimming pool, all the employees started bowing down. Some of them were on their knees, some of them were on their face, but all of them just dropped to the floor. And I, I just remember thinking, I have no idea what they're doing, but I did feel something about the Lord. I knew something was going on about the Lord, but I didn't know what was going on. But the customers, none of them bowed down. They stood straight as a nail. And then I remember thinking, it seemed, it seemed like in the dream I thought, I felt like they were atheists. They were just standing there looking at everybody else. But everybody just like hit the deck. It was almost almost like the glory of the Lord came in the building and we just everybody but I was I was trying to figure out what was going on. I could not figure out. So that's kind of how it ended. I saw everybody, some people were like this, uh, on their on the ground, on their knees, and I was waiting for my swimming pool. <laughs> you know, so that's that's kind of what my dream was. And I thought, I, I, I don't know. I just don't really know the meaning of it. I, and you guys know what true value is, right? Have you guys ever heard of true value? Uh -huh. yeah. so, okay. But I didn't think they were bound because I was there. I thought they were bowing. It, it's something They related. were bowing under the Lord like in reverence, right? Yeah, they were just... Yeah. yeah, they were on their knees and covered their face with their hands and... <laughs> It, it, it was like when I've seen the glory of the Lord come, move in a place and all of a sudden everybody like hits the deck yeah, because yeah. it was like that. <laughs> yeah. But but I was standing there and I just didn't know. The ones that didn't bow, they're kind of like the tares. Exactly. So you can't, you can't, yep, yep. See, that's what I'm seeing. When the wheat gets right, the heads bow down. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Kelly, you missed part of the dream, but... In the dream, the Lord just gave him this dream a couple days ago. He goes into a true value store, which true value, get play on words, true value. He wants to get um, a pool. I've had quite a few dreams with swimming pools in it, and like often it represents like the Holy Spirit, like the water. Uh, Julie is another person I happen to know that gets lots of dreams with swimming pools in it, and every time there's a swimming pool, it's always God showing her about the Holy Spirit. Does the Holy Spirit move at this place or this church or what is the swimming pool empty is it full and so the fact that he wants to get a little swimming pool for his niece i believe now i guess i'm kind of interpreting the dream but before i just give my interpretation anybody i just anything i can point out to you that that you got um that, that comes to you before i just share my interpretation with people that were kneeling down were they making were they crying any noise? No, I just saw them all starting to go down to the floor. Were they um, like bowing down? Yeah, they were like ba they were bowing down. It was almost almost like you could. I mean, if the Lord walked in, we'd all we'd yeah. hit the deck. Yeah. You know, it was like yeah. And I was just I was looking at everybody. Yeah, was it young people or was it people of all ages? Oh, uh, uh, I would say older people. And it was only the only the employees. Yeah, only the, the customers employees. weren't bowing down. The, and the bo all of them, the customers and the employees were older people, or just kind of. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't of, see any young. Not people. really. I, yeah, not really. Yeah, you, know. you know, 50, 60, 70 wow. range adults. You know, adult. I would say adults. Uh, I have something. Because all the employees bowed down, they were connected to management, who found your pool for you. Yeah. So they were. In line with 
want, the Lord wanted that pool to be found. Yes. You had to go to a second employee to get the right guy. Yes. To find you the pool. Mm -hmm. All the employees are part of that scene. Yep, that's good. They're that's part good. of true value. Yeah, yeah. true yeah. value. Yeah. 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 Wow, that's good. Mm. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And then the, the customers. Um, just like, you know what? It was like what Gerald said. It was like the wheat and the, the tears. Yeah, just, exactly. They just stood that's straight. And almost, I almost looked at him. I remember thinking in the dream, almost like there was a mocking. Yes. They were right. mocking uh, the ones that were bowing. Yeah. Yeah. Is what I said. Well, the ones standing, like I said, were the tares. And the wheat, when it gets ripe, the heads bow down. And that's when it's ripe for harvest. Yeah. So the harvest is coming. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the... The, um, see Dan? See Danny didn't think this dream was like much of Danny. It was a powerful well, dream. I just powerful didn't understand dream. anything of it. But the people standing up too, um, out in in in, in uh, around you know in the world today, around there's the ones that are standing hard for the for the world's ways or for their flesh or for yeah. the government or Really, the bottom line is they're standing hard for the kingdom of darkness. But a lot of them don't know it. Yeah. But I mean, they're they're like resisting anything that they want to get God out of every, more and more and more. Yeah. I mean, I just I mean, I just saw this. I've been watching this videos about the Christian music industry, and I'm just blowing my mind on what is behind the scenes and the and the massive push by the LGB community and all of these. And, you know, well-known Christian artists and bands and stuff that are, you know, kind of, you know, oh, uh, not necessarily embracing it, but they're basically kind of cowering, you know, cow letting, yeah. uh, you know, and and they're sending out these messages that if the, the industry doesn't change, you know, they're they're going to die. In other words, they need to be more accepting of these. these yeah, they, they want to. They got to make them more woke. Yeah, they, they they've got to be more accepting of yeah. this because. Mm -hmm. The industry is basically the same people that own the world music industry, own the Christian music industry, yeah. and it's all an industry now, and it's not the main focus isn't about crazy God. Although some, so what I do is I listen to the radio, and I listen to some of the commentaries sometimes, and I'm bit, but what I listen for is, is it got anointing? Is there a kingdom in it? Yeah. And so every so often I get a new song, you know, yeah. off the radio. But a lot of it is kind of, it's not a whole lot different than the secular music, it's just yeah, how Christian works. Exactly. And I knew that for a long time. But the point I'm trying to make with what your dream is, is that there's this, this these people that are standing apart. And they're even in the church and they're saying, you know, the church needs to be more accepting of, of sin. And the church needs to be more this and that. And Jesus said, I came to bring a sword. I came to say, you know, this is right and this is wrong. I came to, you know, divide, you know, Jesus, you know, that's a very unpopular place to be nowadays. You know, there, there's, there's, it's black and white. It's right and wrong. There's not fifty shades of gray or whatever. You know. <laughs> well, I think that there's a lot of irony too in that what you were talking about the freedom, because God is, that's freedom. Mm -hmm. But how all those people we are talking about, and and often lots of people in Eugene, they think what they're doing is free. Uh, yeah. That's right. Right. It's like a total yeah, like a twist yeah. of yeah. the term freedom. Like they're free to do whatever they want. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. yeah. first guy that didn't have the pool represents water. Water represents the Holy Spirit. He didn't have the Holy Spirit. Mm. So, and the other guy says, yeah, I can give. I can go get one. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Or it's connected to the love of your niece. God loves children. Yeah, that's the other part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it doesn't mean God, God's on the idea of just giving it to you. Yeah, so what a I, gift from God through you. Mm. So you're tied you, to that. You're gonna get rid of the Holy Ghost. Well, yeah. So what I see, Dan, Dan kind of, Dan. I think Dan the dream represents, um, like. Yeah. What do you think it means? Kind of what you're saying, because like even when I was like, Dan, share your dream. Uh, first, you had something to share with the youth, and then you tried. It's like everyone was talking about how God wants to do something with the youth, and the youth are hungry. And like yeah. that's a confirmation of what I felt the message of the dream is. The message of the dream is God is getting ready to pour out His Spirit in a big way, and it's going to bless the youth, like His His niece. And Dan, in the dream, he represents kind of a prophet that was intuitive, intuitive enough to know that this is the times we're in, 
the guy, like, we need to get the swimming pool for the, the, the younger generation. We need them to have, to be able to uh, have the, the fresh outpouring of, of the Holy Spirit, you know, and the freedom of the Spirit. And with the true value, uh, at first there was a guy who's like, oh, wait, I can't get that. And so it shows that God right now is rearranging his bondservants. He's making sure, he's kind of sifting his bondservants. Mm. And so the second time you go in, you, they have the right attitude. God's bondservants. Yeah, I, I do remember the first guy, his attitude was terrible. Oh, Didn't okay. care. So God's cleaning like, house like this. Uh, you know, but the second guy was like, I would be glad to help you. Yeah. Anything. So you keep pursuing what God has put on your heart, he's going to lead you to the man of peace. Yeah. Mm. And man of peace is your connection mm. inside the closed doors because he trusts you. Mm. Wow. wow. Well, did you That's say powerful. That pool, there was something else that was attached to the pool. So, just, was it just the rounds? Yeah, it was one of those little round blow up pools for little, you know, little tiny kids. They're about this tall and you blow them up. They're like six feet around. I went, that was my purpose was going to True Value to buy my niece one of those. Mm. Maybe you have to go do that. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Maybe it's I, true. I, I really it's enjoy being forward. around her. I don't get to be around her very often. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> Yeah, so the reverence of them all bowing down, that, what I see there, is God is bringing a deeper reverence in his true bond servants, which may be in little groups like this. Like maybe maybe this is an example of true value. You mm-hmm. know, the work is at true value. Awesome. That's and true. them all bowing like that, like that makes me think of the upper room. Where they were all praying in unison, and, and then that Holy Spirit just really pours out in that moment. And so, there is a cost to get the outpouring, and I think the cost is is in unison, reverence, and, and, and really uh, submitting and, and being humble before the Lord. You know. Can I yeah. share about the glory? You know? Yeah. Yeah. So I experienced. I was talking with Brian about my little reading trip I had last yeah, week. Yeah. Uh, so I was there just a few days ago, Saturday morning for the healing room. And the glory of the Lord was so thick. I remember walking in the bathroom. I mean, the glory of God was so thick in the bathroom, I thought, I was thinking, you know what, if I could just clean toilets in the kingdom, <laughs> I would be thrilled if I could just clean to- I was, I was like, it was so thick just in the bathroom, the glory of God. Yeah. That was actually my thought. If I could just clean toilets, if I could just be a janitor, I would be absolutely thrilled. It was that real. It was that thick to me. That's that was my experience. But we went in the healing room, sitting in the hallway. The presence of the Lord was so powerful, sitting in the hallway. I could have sat there probably for days without being moved. It was above and beyond the peace and glory was I don't even have words to explain it but I always go down there and I think what is it Lord what do we miss what is here that is it that we're missing where we could I'm always trying to yes. you know yeah, show I, me something Lord what, is it the music down there. Yeah. you know is yeah. it the music because the music's different mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I wonder you know I watch revivals and things and some of the revivals I've watched the music, it's revi- revival music is different. Yeah. They're, they're not playing what we play. Mm-hmm. It's a different sound. Mm-hmm. And I thought, maybe that's that could be part of it. Maybe. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, sure. Maybe we need to tap into more revival type mm-hmm. worship. Maybe. I'm mm-hmm. just throwing stuff out. But mm-hmm. uh, it's also it, anticipation. Yeah. You know, it's like those you know, that you've heard about a place, mm-hmm. that anticipation of getting there just because you've and, heard so much. And expectation. Yeah. yeah. And you're when you get there, because I've been there many times, but the very first time I was there, I had heard all this stuff, so I was ready. You know? Yeah. I was like, I want that. And even the very first place I went to was their prayer room, where it's quiet. Out there. Yeah. And the Lord said, I want you to go over there. And I, go, and I walk in thinking, what's going to happen? Well, you can't talk. You know, it's just peaceful. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. I have so, my heart so much is to bring back what I experienced. Like, yeah. 
Lord, please show us how can we experience right here what I experienced in the toilet. You know, just give us what I had in the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? If I could have that here. I'd be a royal flush. That would be good. Pardon? One reason why you can't is because he wants it to be different. You know, he's That's told true. me before, even when I was in Brazil, it's old man. Right. Mm. He wants you to go up every day with new man. Mm. Uh, he wants you to show him your misery. You know, you yep. at it in your tents, yep. kept it overnight, turned into worms, and that and it's going like mm. it's great down there. But when you try to bring Ethel up here, it's not the same. Mm. I mean, all, we have it all. We can. It's the same thing here mm -hmm. as it's down there. It's just so. We just feel like it's it's so thick. It's so constant. Yeah. But they can bring what they have up here. Yeah. 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 And they do. They come up, but it's still not quite the same. Yeah. Uh, Nate encouraging us and words and whatever is to ask God to speak to our imagination. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that is the that is creativity. Yeah. That is His heart. And he desires to express his heart through love in us, where we where we like get the bigger picture, or we can see a picture, or we can see an image, or we can just feel something. But our imagination is just waiting to be released as we as we meditate on him, as we dwell in him. He is wanting to give us like a like a, a splash, you know, a water color or something beautiful, just yeah. just like that. And the beef were here. Because too many people try to take Bethel and bring it up here. Yeah. And what says, no, that's Bethel. I want you to it's the same God. Oh yeah. That's yeah. Good. He just wants us to have it here. Yeah. But different. Yeah. Be authentic. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they send people from Bethel here every so often too to do different meetings at churches yeah. and mm -hmm. stuff too. And they're pretty powerful. Yeah. Be careful. I mean, I've been there a lot, a lot of times older, but I have to be careful of building Bethel up. Right. Yeah. As, mm -hmm. as where we want to go worship. Right. Says, no. It's the same God having here. Well, so, like, as Toronto Jesus said, you people go to Toronto and they want to bring it back, but right. it works in the James. And yeah. 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 Same thing. Well, it kind of mm -hmm. worked with Bethel. I mean, yeah. the guys from. Bethel went to Toronto and then brought it back. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, uh, but we're the church isn't a place or, right. or a building. We're the church. Right. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, some of them are getting a, a, a bigger download in other places that we want to get that download here. You know, I, that's what you want. You want to be downloaded here, and and so. It's really yeah, how do we do it? Is a good question. It's really hard to drive down the road and leave you know yeah you yeah. just experience that yeah you have to go out back out again it's like yeah, yeah. that's the worst feel, feeling ever feel, <laughs> like void. there's a void there yeah. you know, like, oh, I, I really enjoy that but i have to watch myself i'd say yeah hey I, I, let's go back down to that boat and just yeah well, we were just there a couple weeks ago well not not now but when yeah. she said it and i thought oh you're right we're mm -hmm. we're starting to worship that boat is that community is um, where Bethel is, Reading, is that a pretty heavy Christian community in general? Do you know, or just that one thing? No, it's not. It's not any more than any others. And Thirty thousand. And I've now. heard that like ten percent of the community goes to Bethel. Yeah. That's pretty more than Eugene. Uh, that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty. That's, yeah. that's more than Eugene. So, yeah, 10, so they got ten percent of the people in that community that are going to that church. Yeah. Well, that spreads out through that whole community. Well, there's 11,000 at that moment. Huh? They have 11,000. 11,000 people. So there's about 100,000. 100,000 to 100. So, so, there, so there's 100,000 people in Reading, and about 11,000 of them go to Bethel. Yeah, yeah that's true. Wow. Yeah. That's, that, that, the reason why I'm saying that is because one of the reasons why, if you look around here, <laughs> it's not like that. Yeah, you're right, you're right. It's not like that at all. Yeah. And, 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 and so we need to work, you know, that needs to, that would be great if we could get that to, you know. Get that percentage. Like Pastor Brian uh, used to say, oh, I, you know, I'm, we want to get everybody saved in Lane County, but I did a little figuring and I checked out all the churches and I added up all the seats and said, man, we wouldn't even be able to fit 10% of the churches we got here. 
Uh, we don't have churches big enough. That's what Bethel has. They have to tithe. Yeah, you know, that's what I'm saying. The, the, we, in other words, we don't have a big. Enough, we don't have enough seats for the bus. If we get them, you know, yeah. you know, yeah. and you see, because he's always doing this kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> see, have, Let's get no, everybody saved. You know? They have no room. They're so. They have so many people jamming in there. Right. We have nine services on. Well, week. people come all. Really? Well, people come yeah. from all over the country and all over the world to go oh, there. Yesterday, yeah. Yeah. You know, they, when they go like a hundred million dollar campus. Yeah, they they, they come from all over the away, world. So then they'll have a thirty-five. I've been there, you know, a couple of times. Thirty-five hundred seat auditorium. And it's very gonna, impressive. They're gonna do it better. You gonna say something? Well, yeah. I I remember something. The first time I went to Bethel was close to twenty years ago. I went by myself. I didn't even know what it was like, but I ended up buying a CD. I remember years ago by Bill Bill Johnson. So I was driving down the road listening to it, and one thing he said that I never forgot, because I even back then I was like I never experienced anything like it. It was so powerful, the the power of God there. Yeah. I, I just I would it shook me so much. But he said this. He said that he noticed the whole atmosphere in Reading begin to change when he did this one thing. He said when he began to go out to the local churches and give away what he had, mm -hmm. he said the atmosphere began to shift. Mm -hmm. And he kept doing it. Well, he'd go to the Baptist church. And give them what? Like just material or Teach them on. Or? Just give the what the Lord's given. Uh, speak to them. Preach at the Baptist church down the street. Go to the Pentecostal church and talk to speak on. The money. Gave yeah, the money, gave and talk on healing. Basically, about giving to the other churches. Yeah, yeah. he started with the local that, churches. So he broke the. So he basically broke that spiritual, yeah. or not spiritual, religious, religious. Yeah. religious. See, we got a lot of that over here. It's like, oh, we don't want Dave Hyman doing this and yeah. getting that thing going because he's going to steal people from our church. And yeah. yeah, we don't want you know. And, and hey, we you know, <laughs> you know. So he fingers. said, <laughs> yeah, the, exactly. shift, yeah. the shift, the shift began. That's when the shift began. In Reading, when, okay, that, when he did that. That's what he said on that but CD. Wow. I wanted to share one other thing just that happened to me last week. I was, um, I do a little running around my area where I live. There's a loop there, it's about two miles. And every, you know, every other day or so I go for a run, you know. And I was and, and, and I was running around the back and there's this guy, I don't know if you know who Bob Russell is. Bob Russell, he passed away last year, but he'd have these big reggae concerts and everything out there in Marcola. You know, it's like the reggae festival or whatever. And, you know, I mean, these lights and any of these kind of new age things would go on and the neighbors would complain. Sometimes they wouldn't shut the music down for So he died, so I thought, okay, man, you know, we we'll probably won't have to deal with it. And, and during COVID, they shut it down. So a couple of years it hadn't been going on. Well, I'm driving by, I'm running by there the other day and these trucks coming in with all of these uh, porta potties. And I said, uh-oh, I guess there's some kind of event gonna be happening over here, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so they're going into, so I'm jogging up by there and everything else. I, think, you know, I told my wife, I don't know what's going on. So, and, and then a, a couple of days later, I'm jogging by again. There's a guy out there directing traffic, all these cars, like, from, you know. And I said, hey, man, what's going on over here? He said, oh, we're having a pirate festival. We pirate? Haven't had a pirate festival, yeah. We haven't had one of these pirate festivals in a long time, and then we're, we're back again and everything. I, and I'm, 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 you know, running around there, and I'm thinking, Wow, I, I mean, and, and the people, the, the spirit of the people, they're coming in. I mean, and they're always like Washington license plates you know, and stuff. And they just like, you know, usually when they're running around out there in the, in the country, like people are like, hey, that's one, you know, how's it going? How's it going? These people are like zombies. <laughs> so oh, I was thinking, wow. yeah. oh my God, I think we got the zombie apocalypse moving <laughs> over here. About that. So, God, help me here. What, what's going on with this group of people? There's a pirate and, movement. Huh? I know. Now oh, that cannot be crazy. godly. That, yeah. Eugene's a perfect place for that. Oh, yeah, there's love a guy in Eugene. He's been there for a while, and he, he begs for money. And he's got a pirate hat. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. he wears a pirate yeah. deal. Yeah. And he's got a sign that says "Maroon." He help all that. Maroon. Yeah. 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 Please yeah. Please well, the point I, I, that I want to huh. make is that some of these things we, we, we see around, you said we need to we need to stand in the spirit and yeah. pray against it. Now, my wife had just got these horses shoot. Oh no, it was a pirate thing. A few years back, years ago, they'd shoot off cannons in the middle of the night and scare my horses and everything else. 
Well, it was quiet. I couldn't believe how there's I don't know how many people were down there. It was several hundred anyway. The car, the, the you know, and it was pretty quiet. I said, you know, heard a little roughly, you know, and I thought. And then now they're going to have a fern burning. You heard, have you heard of that? Mm -hmm. Fern burning fest. That's like the man burning man thing oh, they wow. do in the, yeah. you know. So we need. So I, Julia said, "Well, I've always prayed, and I dumped a bottle of oil down there." <laughs> so we're going to turn that into, you know, when Bob Russell died, we're going to turn that into a Christian camp. Huh. And I and I started thinking. I said, "Lord, what you know? Do we need to do the oil thing? I mean, that's a good thing, right?" And, and uh, you know what I found out? Jesus never endorsed it, and he never did it in his whole ministry. It was Old Testament. Because <laughs> he already gave him, he blew on him. <sighs> Here's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's a whole different story. I was like, well, well, wait a minute. Okay, I'm trying to pick out his one. So the point is, the land's cursed. Because they've been doing these things we've there before. Yeah. Scott, and now I'm like Gary. Boom! You know, <laughs> you know, so it's <laughs> I'm getting, I'm, and yeah. I'm thinking, i got to get Gary down here, and we got yeah. you guys got to come to my, my house. we got to do Let's that do thing on, at the end of the month at my place. Let's do it. we got to pray about that. Oh, yeah. Because these are some of the things that's holding back what you're wanting. That's you know, actually a confirmation of what I felt. You see what I'm like, saying? What Eugene, what we're dealing with You see here, what I'm saying? Bethel, Reading, they have kind of broken off some of the regional strongholds. That's it. And that's some of the groundwork that needs to be done in our in our area. Yeah. To be able to have that freedom like that. When you just come in the city, you just feel it when you're coming down there. It's like, wow, there's freedom in this place. You know, and so that's kind of Richard weird. Twist was a Native American Indian. And I went to a powwow years ago. He passed away years ago. But he gave a, he gave a talk in the Open God God about in Chronicles of the Land. Mm -hmm. The Indians are really good on the land. And right. He says it is not the building, it's the land. It's the land, yeah, the absolutely. Cursed. He says that's why when you go to different parts of the country, you feel different things. He says because different parts of the country, the land's been cursed differently. Yeah. And you're not feeling, you know, the strongholds. In it. It's the land's been cursed. He said you need to heal the land. Yeah. And well, then the, the building will be uh, yeah. sanctified. These pirate festivals turn into yeah. drunken. <laughs> or is he basically yeah. after yeah. a while? You know. So this is out there more calling it. Yeah, wow. this uh, around the other. You know, it's crazy. The Brad Burning Man, because just yesterday I was out with my brother all day in the in the, in the mountains, and he's like, "Man, I want to put this podcast on with you." It was all about Burning Man and yeah. how how demonic that really is. Yeah, so it's basically a human sacrifice. Uh -huh. They build this big human strict stature. It's conditioning people for human sacrifice. In the yeah. Future. Because yeah. in the future, Satan wants to bring oh, yeah. full-on human sacrifice back. Absolutely, yeah. And it's just so, so, so demonic. demonic for it. yeah. So demonic. So anyway, so in order <clears throat> to break that up, you know, um, uh, there's 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 a reason why, you know, you 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 experience a culture, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you want to bring it here. Mm -hmm. You know what? You know what? You know what? You know what kingdoms would do. Or, or, or even cultures would do if they want to bring their culture. Hmm. Let's take like um, Chinatown. Hmm. It, you know, they, they got a Chinatown in, in San Francisco, right? They found out if they could get 300 people from China to move in one place hmm. and just do their businesses and all stay and kind of stay connected and everything, kind of multiply a little yeah. bit, that they could influence and they could bring their culture and they could have a Chinatown. Yeah. And so as soon as you go into Chinatown, you're in Chinatown, or then yeah. there's little Vietnam, mm -hmm. or there's yeah. this or that or the other thing, right? And and the Romans kind of figured some of that out too. Yeah. You know how how do you get a culture going? You got to get a certain number of people. Mm -hmm. Well, this is how we're going to do it here. We mm -hmm. got to get we got to get a group That's of unity. Yeah. That's we what need you're some unity. Yeah. We need some group of people, and we got to understand that there's other things. This kind of stuff moving in. It's in my backyard. Yeah. This is my backyard. Yeah. I'm like, I'm running around. I'm, I'm just like, there's a reason why I'm running around there, you know, in the morning. I'm thinking of jog, and All of a yeah. sudden, I see all these stuff, and I'm thinking, what the heck going on down here? Yeah. I thought the guy died, you know. Huh. Bob Russell was going to have me come and do it. We're, we're, it we, he, he, he stopped doing it about four years ago because somebody ripped him off and took all the money. Oh, so wow. Then I was, he was talking to me about maybe doing a drive-in night and bringing all the hot rods out there and having maybe Elvis and do a big drive-in thing, mm -hmm. and that never materialized. And, uh, and I talked to him about it. But then I, I figured it was done, and his daughter took, you know, he died, and his daughter inherited everything. Now she's starting everything back up that he did, because he started with the pirate festivals, and he's kind of, she's restarting all that. Mm -hmm. And this is not uh, what we need in this area. But yeah. it's not that I want to, I do want to stop it, but I, what I'm saying is, what, I, what, what I'm seeing is, there's this stuff, and, there, and, and there's a lot of this stuff going on that we don't even know about, mm -hmm. all around this community. Yeah, and that sure. kind of holds things mm -hmm. out. Yeah, doesn't it? published in the newspaper. Yeah, it kind of it kind of it kind of holds things out of what you want. Mm -hmm. But I'm with you, Dan. Man, we need to bring it in, man. Oh, man. Yeah.